Hey friend, welcome back to the channel. As a designer, I'm sure you're often creating flows, diagrams, and needing to present your work. Historically, I've done this a lot in Figma, but recently I've been using a tool that has been great for all of this called Overflow. It has many use cases, including flows and diagrams, customer journeys, you can create illustrations and put them straight into flows, or even use it for presenting designs and storytelling. Now Overflow integrates with any design tool, so whether you're using Adobe XD, Sketch, Figma, or even Photoshop, Overflow syncs directly with your designs in your design tool. You can export your screens straight into Overflow or you can set it up to sync back and forth, which is super, super easy. Any changes that I make in Figma will sync back to Overflow. What's great about Overflow is that you can use it at all stages of the product journey. And what I like about it is that it gives you a really nice high level overview. And if you want, you can zoom in and dive and dig deeper into certain parts of the design. Here's a quick look at what I've created in Overflow already and what we're gonna walk through creating today. You can see that I can present this flow pretty seamlessly. I can interact with it like a prototype and I can edit this flow easily by just reorganizing screens, adding new flow arrow connectors and more. Now I'm a Mac user, so I've done all of this on Mac, but don't worry if you use Windows, Overflow works for Windows just as well. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I made this. A quick note before we jump into the tool, this is a sponsored video, but you all know by now that I only do sponsored videos with tools I actually like and enjoy. I remember first hearing about Overflow maybe two years ago when they just came out and I remember giving it a go back then. I'm really excited to jump back into it now and show you all its capabilities. Let's do it. I've downloaded their Figma plugin and desktop tool for Mac. Now let's talk about the workflow for a second. So you wanna start with your design in your design tool. For me, I have this file here that is an open source design file for a COVID tracing app. And there's kind of two flows here that we're gonna work with. The first is an onboarding flow, and the second is sort of turning on or enabling your Bluetooth as part of the app experience. So let's start with the onboarding flow, and let's choose a few screens to sync back to Overflow. Now, a pro tip here is to make sure that you name your frames well, because later on, if and when you wanna sync between your design tool and Overflow, Overflow will take the name of your frame or artboard and use that to make the sync connection. So I have uniquely named all of these frames here, which will be really useful later if and when you wanna sync. A quick note that this design file does not have any prototyping links. However, if it did, Overflow would retain those prototyping links as well. All right, let's select all of these screens and using the Figma plugin, I am going to click on sync to Overflow and then let's jump over there to see what we've got. Okay, now we're here in Overflow and we can see that our screens imported really, really nicely. I'm gonna add some annotations and some documentations here just so that my sort of flow is well organized and documented if someone were to come in here. So I'm just gonna add a rectangle shape here and I'm going to call this screen my launch screen and then duplicate it over here and this whole section here is gonna be my onboarding flow. So Overflow has some really nice predefined styles here. If I click on the shape up the top left in this dropdown, you can see I can select from a range of predefined styles. And if you want, you can add your own new style, something that's maybe a bit more on brand. I'm gonna jump back over to Figma and now I'm also going to import this Bluetooth flow here. And once again, I'm gonna make sure that this is annotated as well so that anyone who comes into this file uh, knows what they're looking at. All right, now let's add our connectors and prototype links. So if I zoom in here, now you'll see if I hover over one of these screens, it kind of lights up in pink and has these arrows on the top and bottom. Now, what this basically lets me do is really easily create links between the screens. And now not only can I do this on a screen, but I could also do this on an individual element if I wanted to. For example, this next button here, when the user interacts with it, I want it to take them to the following screen. So I'm going to connect all of these screens here in my onboarding flow so that it's really clearly annotated what happens when you interact with these elements on the screen. So like with the shape that we did earlier, with these connectors, you can also add different connector styles. So maybe for like 
success, you want it to be yellow. And then maybe if there's like an error or a back, you want that to be a different color or a different style so that when you're kind of looking at it from the bird's eye view, it's really, really easy to sort of tell the difference between the different connectors. I'm gonna leave all of mine blue for now, but another cool thing I wanna show you is that if you for some reason need to move your frames around, like in this case, maybe I wanna move this screen, you'll see that the arrows actually maintain connection as I move the screen around. And wow, I think this is really game changing. I have spent so much time in my design tool, manually creating these flow links that I have to then later move around if I end up moving my frames around. So having the connectors kind of stick to the frame, I think is really, really nice. It makes for a simple workflow. Another really neat thing is that you can easily add device frames to your screen. So if I select all of these screens here and then at the top left, click on this mobile icon, I can then select a device for these screens, in this case, iPhone SE, add the device skin, and then it automatically really easily adds those device frames to my screens, which is really nice if it comes to presenting this work, having the device frame around it just makes it feel a little bit more tangible and realistic. Now moving over to the Bluetooth flow. Now in this flow, there is a split or a decision that has to be made. Once it launches, basically the app will try and detect is Bluetooth enabled, yes or no. And depending on the outcome of that decision, it will take you to a different flow in the experience. So here's how we would set that up in Overflow. Basically, first I'm going to add a decision tree. So in this case, it's gonna be a diamond and I'm gonna ask, is Bluetooth enabled? So this sort of launch screen is first gonna take us here to this diamond decision. And then depending on if the answer is yes or no, you'll go to a different flow. So if it's yes, then we'll make this diamond take you over here to this flow. And you can actually add a label to your connectors. So here I will put yes, just move that a bit closer. And then if the answer is no, then we want to take you down here to this flow. Now I want to make these connectors a bit visually different so that it's really easy to tell sort of the happy from the sad path. So let's make the no flow orange. So being able to really quickly set up these connectors and flows and decision trees saves me so much time. When I do this in Figma, it's all very, very manual, creating the elements myself, moving things around manually. So I think this is really, really nice for just quickly getting together your flows. And you can see here that from a glance, you can see what the happy and sad paths are, where like the sad paths where it's a no or a close or a back are represented in orange, and then the happy paths are in blue. All right, now that my flows are connected, let's present the work. So to present your work, you can click on the play button up in the top right. And this takes you into present view. And there's basically two modes when it comes to present view. Either you can walk through your designs like a flow or a prototype. So let's start with the flow, which is basically presentation mode. I'm gonna click over here and start at the onboarding screen. And you'll see that as I interact with the arrows, Overflow automatically kind of animates, moves and takes you to wherever the next screen is. And this is really, really nice for presenting work. No longer are you kind of in your design tool zooming in and out and like panning around your sort of messy design file. But now with Overflow, you can kind of easily walk through step by step your flows. This mode feels really, really good when it comes to presenting or showing your work in a review or a crit. I can just sort of screen share and show the work like this. Or if I really wanted to, I could generate a share link and send that over to the team, drop it in Slack or something, and they can immediately open up this sort of presentation mode of the design. If there are any comments on the file, then your colleagues will also see that when they open up the share link and of course have the ability to leave comments on their own. Let's try the presentation mode with the Bluetooth flow over here in our decision tree. So we begin here with the launch screen and then as I interact with the connector, it takes us to this decision tree. And I can either choose no, which takes me to the sort of no flow or let's go back. And now I can tap on yes. And that takes me to the yes flow where I can then go through the rest of the app experience. It's really smooth. The other presentation mode is prototype view. So here I can toggle over to prototype view and then I can click through this flow just like I would a regular prototype. This view is really good if you're presenting your work, say to engineers, or maybe you wanna have a more focused discussion on a particular flow or maybe like a particular interaction or experience within your design. Prototype view gives you that nice focused viewpoint. So throughout this video, you might've been watching this and thinking, 
wow, this is super cool, but when should I use overflow in my design process? And well, I think the answer is anywhere. Whether you're just ideating, getting started with your designs, you wanna explore some quick flows, or maybe you're at the iteration phase, you wanna move a little bit more into high fidelity, present your work, get some feedback, or maybe you're at the handoff phase and you wanna document your designs and maybe show and hand off your designs to developers. I think Overflow works well at any stage in the process. A super cool tip about Overflow is that you can embed your designs into other tools. So if you're using something like Notion or Confluence Jira, you can embed your design straight in that tool, making it super easy for your developers to interact with your design. As a Figma user myself, I find that lately I've been using Figma a lot to present my work, whether it's in design reviews or crits, because the hassle of exporting screens into a tool like Google Slides is really cumbersome. While it's convenient for me to just open up my Figma and show my work, it's actually a really messy place. I'm often sort of zooming and panning around and I have multiple iterations of my designs and it's just not a clean way to present. So with Overflow, I can choose the selected screens I want to present, quickly chuck them in there, add some annotations, flows really easy, really quickly, and then it gives a much better presentation view. The folks at Overflow have been really generous to offer my viewers, so you, a discount code on Overflow. So head on to the link in the description below and you can get started using Overflow right now for 20% off. All right, friend, let me know if you have a suggestion for any other design tools I should try or you'd like me to review and walk through. I'm always looking for new design tools to give a go. Otherwise, I'll see you in a future video. Bye-bye.